with the absolute toilet that was 2020 out of the way at last, I'm back into commissions now. And things on that front are actually looking really, really good. I started this year with a beautiful commission for my good friend Joe for some Adeptus Custody stuff. This is actually part of a small force that I'm going to be painting for Joe. And you may remember recently I did a critique video also for Joe's Custody, so they have been a bit of a focus for me recently. With that in mind, I'm actually going to be breaking this one down into two videos. Today, we're going to tackle this Shield Captain's jet bike, and then in the next video, we'll tackle one of the infantry miniatures from the army to show you the colour scheme for those, because it is kind of the same for all of them regardless. We're going to be doing some really interesting stuff today, uh, messing with a colour scheme where the jet bikes are a completely different colour to the riders themselves, another reason why I wanted to break it down into an extra video. We're going to be going through a fair number of steps just for this jet bike, so I don't want to waste too much of your time. Let's get on with some painting. Okay, so here's the sub-assemblies I'm going to be working with. You can see that I've got the entirety of the jet bike itself fully assembled, because I think that's fine, there's nothing particularly hard to reach on it. However, the little side plates for the legs of the rider, the rider himself, those I'm keeping separate just to be able to reach everything and to be able to make sure that I get good thorough paint on everywhere that it needs it. And what I did first of all here was just spray everything black and then spray the bike specifically in Vallejo Metal Color Dark Aluminium. So that I've got a silver bike because that's kind of where the majority of the, the deeper parts, the harder to reach parts, they're all basically silver. And then I can just overlay the other colours on top of that quite easily. It's also pretty much the last you're going to see of the rider until the end of the video now. So we'll do away with him and uh, we'll get on with dealing with this jet bike. And the first task is going to be to find all those armour plates all over the jet bike. And there are quite a few of them and we're going to want to base coat them with some nice even layers of Corax White. Just get a really good flat, just off white on them. Once that's all done you should have something that looks a bit like this. Okay next up I'm going to be prepping a dark blue oil wash. So I want you to grab some black oil paint, some blue oil paint, some white spirit and I want you to mix them together until you get a dark blue oil wash. Pretty simple. I am keeping this oil wash fairly thick though because I want to do a couple of different things in the cleanup stages that are going to want it to just be a touch more saturated than normal. Okay, so first things first, we're just going to apply that oil wash to every single area of the jet bike, nice and straightforward. Nothing is going to get missed, we're going to cover the entire miniature. And if you've never used an oil wash before, this is the part that's going to blow your mind. First of all, we're going to use a Q-tip or a cotton bud, and we're just going to very slightly dampen it with some white spirit, and we're going to use that to start to move away the oil paint from the areas where we don't want it. And once we've got the majority of that oil wash cleaned up, we're just going to do a little bit of fine tuning with a brush, again just dampened with some white spirit. This also allows me just to sort of dither blend some of the transitions a little bit just to make them look a bit nicer and a bit smoother. The Q-tip's very good for getting a massive oil paint off at once, but uh, the brush is really the sort of uh, the, the precision instrument for, for just tuning things up. And the results of that little bit of work there, it's very very quick, it took me maybe... 10 minutes to do the whole deal and uh, look at the beautiful shading that we have all over our miniature. The lovely thing about oil washes of course is that as you blend them away with the q-tip or the brush they do create a sense of a gradient at the same time as they're being blended away so not only do they do all of your shading for you but they also take care of sort of your lower mid-tone transition into your base color which is really really nice and really really handy. Okay now I want to start dotting a few gold accents around this jet bike. I think gold's going to be a really good clashing color to the other things that I'm going to do. So I'm just going to grab some retributor armor and I'm actually going to be being really careful for the majority of this to kind of work it around the oil wash because I want some of this gold to have those kind of dark blue shadows for a bit of extra contrast. Where we can't make that work we will be coming back in with a wash though. So these are the areas that I chose to paint gold and as I said I was going to do I've tried to leave some of that dark blue oil wash in the shadows of the majority of these areas. But again, as I promised, we are also just going to grab some Agrax Earthshade now and some of those areas where we couldn't really leave the oil wash because they were a bit too fine to pick them out or whatever, we'll just go around those with Agrax Earthshade. Also the little Aquilas and Eagle Head Insignias and stuff like that, just to give them a bit of sort of surface shading. Okay, next up, that big eagle at the front and the seat of the bike are going to take a base coat of Galvorback Red. We're going to do some really cool high contrast red work on this bike, and uh, those are the two sort of main big chunky areas that will feature it. Here's what that looks like once it's all base coated.
Okay, now we've got a few stages of highlights to go through. And what we wanna do here is just thin all of these colors down and use very controlled layers to create these highlights. So we're not really looking to blend here because we're gonna use multiple layers of colors that are very close together. But we do just wanna make sure that that paint is reasonably thin so that there's a little bit of transparency to it. First of all, we're gonna start out with Mephiston Red and uh, we're just gonna get that over all of these areas, only really leaving the recesses showing. Next, we're gonna go to Evil Sun's Scarlet, and again, we're gonna shrink the areas a little bit now, highlight a bit less of them, continuing with those controlled layer strokes. Then we'll go into Wild Rider Red, and again, we're starting to really focus now towards tips, upwards facing areas, edges, stuff like that, getting smaller and smaller each time. I'm also gonna stop adding any more highlight to the bike seat at this stage, and I'm only gonna continue to work on the eagle at the front. The bike having a rider on top of that seat means that not as much light is gonna be able to hit the lever of that seat, so it would be a bit silly to highlight it up really, really bright. Our next stage, and this could be your final stage if you wanted it to be, is Jacaro Orange. I really, really love this base paint. I think it's absolutely fantastic, and it works great as a final highlight for reds if you don't mind thinning it down a good bit. But in this case, we are going to go one step further. We're just going to get a little bit of white, any white will do, and just touch it in onto the tips of some of those areas of the eagle, just to bring some little kind of pokey, you know, mega highlights to areas here and there. This same red recipe is also what I use for all the gems on the miniature, everywhere all over it. So when you get to painting the gems, just do exactly the same thing. And speaking of little fiddly jobs like the gems, I've done my usual thing of skipping over those. They're all tiny, small areas, and I think most people have their own recipes for things like that. But you can see here I've painted in some controls with like greens, blues, and reds, and I've also gone around and just done a few of the other little tiny details. The missiles at the front got some green on them and stuff like that. And after that, it was just time for me to finish off the rider and then to bring him back in, get him glued to the bike, and now I can take you to some lovely Lazy Susan footage to show you what this Custodes jet bike looks like when it's all finished. So here's that. And don't forget folks, we will be coming back with another video very, very soon that shows the infantry miniatures from the army. So I am gonna show you how I painted this rider. I'm just gonna show you on one of the infantry models because it makes more sense to kind of break stuff down separately and give everything its own video where it deserves it. So tell me, what are your favorite color schemes for custodies? Which ones do you think really, really stand out? Did you like this one? Did you think it was good? If you did, or if you just liked the video, then don't forget to hit that thumbs up button to let me know that you liked it. And of course you can subscribe to the channel and enable notifications if you want to stay up to date on what I'm doing here on YouTube. If you really love the content and you want to see me continue to grow and help support that, then you can pledge on Patreon from as little as $1 a month. There's a link to that in the description along with a link to all my social medias if you want to catch up with me on there. So with all of that said, I will be back very soon with that follow-up video to this one, but thank you for watching everyone. I'm going to roll the end credits now and I'll see you in the next one.